Welcome to this overview of Flamenco. Flamenco is the open source render management solution we developed here at the Blender Animation Studio. And that's the software we've been using during the production of uh, Agent 327 Operation Barbershop to render the film. In this video, I will give you an overview of the software and I will show you how we used it during the production of Agent 327. Before doing an actual demo, let's see how Flamenco works. Flamenco is not a single piece of software, rather it's an infrastructure. Here is a diagram with a few components. So let's have a look at the big blocks that are part of this infrastructure. Here is the client, which is normally us, a computer that can connect to a Flamenco server and do all sorts of things we will see in a moment. Then we have the Blender Cloud, which is where the Flamenco server runs. And then we have one or more render farms. So a local render farm, for example, what we have here in the Blender Studio, or a remote render farm, something we can have on Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services, Azure, and so on. Inside of each render farm, we have a few, a few special components, but most importantly, we have a pool of workers. In the case of the studio, it's uh, all the workstation that the artists are using, or the dedicated render blades that we have. In case of a remote render farm, it's just a bunch of uh, virtual machines. Let's see the components one by one. The client communicates with the server and it allows the creation and the editing of jobs. It's available both in a web browser but also directly inside of Blender. Then we have the server. The server is the central point of Flamenco. In our case, it's available on cloudoblender.org slash Flamenco, but you can install it on your server too. The server provides an API for handling jobs, tasks, and managers. It means given instructions from the clients, it can create jobs that are then stored inside of a database and distribute them further down in the computing infrastructure. The next component we will see is the Flamenco manager. Each render farm has a dedicated Flamenco manager. The manager receives uh, tasks from the server and it distributes them to the workers connected to it. As the workers are handling the tasks assigned, the manager reports back to the server the status of each task. Finally, we have the workers. The workers are simply machines that can run one task at a time. We talked about client, server, manager, worker, but we also mentioned a few other concepts like jobs, tasks, and commands. This is the data we work with in Flamenco. So let's have a look at that. A job is the highest level description of an operation inside of Flamenco. Here we have an example job called Blender Simple Render. This job is made of four tasks and uh, each task is uh, a collection of one or more commands. So in this case it's uh, render frames 1 to 5, render frames 6 to 10, 11 to 15, and in this case, it's a different command, encode the preview. As you can tell from the arrows, these tasks have a relation with each other. This relation is taken into account when the manager assigns tasks to the workers. In this case, uh, task 1, 2, and 3 can be executed at any time, but task 4 requires all three of them to be completed before being executable. Flamenco is meant to be very flexible in uh, handling different task dependencies, but also commands. Pretty much anything can be added here. This allows any application to be used with Flamenco. Here we have a more complex job type called uh, Blender Progressive Render. In this case, our tasks have a different command, which is render frames 1 to 5 with the cycles samples interval from 1 to 10. We have render frames 6 to 10 with the same sample interval, and then frames 11 to 15, again with the same sample interval. Further down, we have render frames 1 to 5 with a different sample interval, 11 to 20, same for task 5 and 6. And further down, we have the same frame interval, but yet another sample interval, 21 to 30. This allows us to have a task that for this frame interval merges the samples from 1 to 10 with 11 to 20, and afterwards, 1 to 20 with 21 to 30, to then finally encode the preview of the film. This is very powerful because it allows us to split the computing of very long renders across multiple workers. In this case, we could be up to three times faster than on a regular worker. Now let's have a look at a practical example. Welcome to the Flamenco dashboard available on cloudoblender.org slash Flamenco. Here we can see a list of the projects that are currently enabled for Flamenco and we can see some uh, interesting stats about the status of the current tasks and the current jobs that are part of this project. Let's dive into Agent 327. This is the jobs view. It's uh, simply an overview of all the render jobs that uh, are running or that have been cancelled or that are completed and that are part of the Agent 327 project. 
When clicking on a job, we load the job details. The name, the status, which blend file has been rendered, on which path the renders have been written. We can perform some operations on the job. And most importantly, we have the task list. So these are the tasks that are part of this job. By clicking on a task, we load the task details, which gives us information such as which worker has been uh, rendering this task. We can even load the full log for this task. This is very useful to gather detailed information about the rendering process, and it can be used to troubleshoot issues or generate rendering stats. But this is also a lot of data to keep around. So when a job is done, we generally want to archive it. We can do so by pressing the archive job button. When a job is archived, it gets moved into the archive section. An archive job is presented in a slightly different way than an archive job. We can still see the job details, but all the task information have been removed from the database. We can still access them by downloading the job archive. The job archive contains each and every task and every Blender log zipped and completely intact. Before looking at the actual rendering process, let's check out the managers. While the Blender Cloud takes care of running the Flamenco server, we have to set up and run our own manager in order to render something. Here I have the BI manager, which is what we use locally for rendering. Here we can see details such as the name, description, which project is linked to this manager, which users have permission to edit the properties of the manager, and finally the authentication token. The authentication token is very important. It's a key that we provide to the manager so that it can identify itself, it can authenticate to the Flamenco server and provide information such as its own IP address. And so when we click here, we can actually see the interface of our own local manager. We see a list of the workers that are inside of our network, when they were last seen, which was the last task they were rendering, which was the last image we rendered, and so on. So let's see how we render a file using Flamenco. Here I have a shot of the film, and uh, my Blender Cloud add-on is already configured to work with Agent 327. The Agent 327 project is already configured to work with Flamenco. This means that the Flamenco interface inside of Blender will be available via the add-on. To render this shot with Flamenco, I go to the render properties, and uh, I make sure that my render settings are all fine, and I head to the Flamenco render panel. Here I can choose some configurations, for example, the job type, I will pick simple render, the frame range, which priority to assign to the tasks, the frame chunk size, so how many frames each worker should render per task. In this case, it's one, which means one worker would render one frame. I can put this up to five, and uh, each worker will render five frames. Let's submit the job to the render farm. So Blender is packing all the dependencies of the shot, except for some things like Alembic caches and so on, and is moving them on a shared location, which is accessible by all the workers in the studio. Once the packing is done, all the tasks for the job will be created and will be assigned to a manager, which will then pick them up and further assign them to the workers. As soon as the job submission is done, a web browser window will be launched and we will be able to see the job itself. So here it is, the job is being queued. If we refresh, the job is now active. One task has been queued. Three of them are being executed right now by different workstations inside of the studio. And uh, the activity line here gives us a hint of what's going on. So the workstation of Sebron is rendering frame 339, is using five gigs of memory, it's been rendering for 65 seconds, 30 seconds are left, and uh, we are path tracing this tile. We can also just load the logs, and we can see exactly at which point we are with the rendering. If we head to the Flamenco Manager preview, these three workstations are actually running. These other computers are simply turned off, so they're not going to pick up any task. We can also visit this location and check the progress of the render. And here are three XRS files that are being rendered right now. Notice that this folder is called dot lighting intermediate. This is just a temporary name that we give to the folder while we are rendering. Once all the frames will be done, the folder will be renamed to 0303D, matching the shot name. This is the last task of this job. 
which is in fact called move to final. If we refresh, some tasks are now completed and the files have been correctly saved. Let's open them up. The workers keep picking up jobs. Here we see the latest frame render by the farm. As the job is progressing, we can see more and more tasks being final and more and more frames appearing in the output folder. What's really important to point out is that Flamenco does not handle blend files directly. Flamenco simply creates commands that tell the workers where to find the blend files and where to render them to based on a configuration per project. And this allows commands to be very, very flexible and generic and uh, it allows us to use Flamenco in uh, different infrastructures for different purposes. This was a quick overview of Flamenco. I hope you enjoyed it. You can check out Flamenco cloud.blender.org slash Flamenco and you can learn more about Flamenco on flamenco.io. Thank you.